one of the main impacts of the baptism is washing away of the original sin original sin does not refer to a particular act of sin rather it refers to the state of sin we need to constantly need the accompaniment of the holy spirit in order to remain in the grace of god thirumuluku koduka koodiya varangalil adipadiyana ondru nammudaiya janma paavathilirundhu nammai adu kaluvirathu indha janma paavam endru ஒரு பாவத்தின் நிலையை குறிக்கிறது நாம் தொடர்ந்து இறைவனின் அருளில் நிலைத்திருக்க வேண்டுமெனில் நாம் பரிசுத்த ஆவியின் துணையில் எப்போதும் நாட வேண்டும் நோட் that i say in tamil then i switch over to english and by the way paul maria says us na korakkala paul steven udanal illamala irundhalo inga namakkaga poosikku vandirukkaru endru udanalam illavadunala prasanga sinnala vappa nenaikkaru ena avar enna kudutha letter la 20 nimithathukku nikamal vaikkana avan sonna adanal 20 nimitha pesirukku permission undu கடந்த மே மாதம் என்னுடைய தாயார் இந்த கொரோனா தொற்று நோய்க்கு ஆளாகினார்கள் திருச்சி தனியார் மருத்துவமனையில் அனுமதித்தோம் தொடர்ந்து ஓரிரு நாளிலேயே எனக்கும் அந்த நோய் இருப்பதாக கண்டுபிடித்ததால் நானும் அதே மருத்துவமனையில் அனுமதி வந்திருக்கேன் ஆனால் அம்மா ஒரு வாரத்திலேயே சீக்கிர வீட்டுக்கு சுகமாகி போயிட்டாங்க ஆனால் நான் தொடர்ந்து அந்த மருத்துவமனையில் இருந்தேன் நிறைய பாவம் செஞ்சு ரொம்ப ரொம்ப நாள் இருப்பாங்க நினைக்கிறேன் மருத்துவமனையில் கொஞ்ச நாள்லேயே அந்த மருத்துவ சிகிச்சை நான் பலன் நினைக்காமல் என்னுடைய நிலைமை இன்னும் அதிக சீரியஸாக போயிருக்குது அப்போ ஆக்சிஜன் பற்றாக்குறை வேற அதனால் இங்கேருந்து பெங்களூரில் உள்ள சென்ட் ஜான்ஸ் மெடிக்கல் காலேஜ் ஹாஸ்பிட்டலுக்கு அழைத்து செல்லப்பட்டேன் அங்கே இரண்டு மாதம் மருத்துவமனையில் சிகிச்சை பெற்று ஜூலை மாதம் தொடக்கத்தில் பத்திரமாக வீடு திரும்பினேன் இரண்டு முறை ஐசியு வைத்து சிகிச்சை கொடுத்தார்கள் அந்த மருத்துவர்களுக்கெல்லாம் ஒரு ஆச்சரியம் நான் ரெண்டாவது ஐசியு போனது ஆச்சரியம் ஐசியுலேருந்து பத்திரமாக வெளியே வந்தது ஆச்சரியம் ஏன்னா ஜெபத்தினால தான் இது நடந்தது என்று சொன்னார்கள் அந்த சமயம் எனக்காக நம்முடைய தந்தையர்கள் சகோதர சகோதரிகள் பங்கு மக்கள் எல்லோரும் ஜெபித்தார்கள் என்ன நேரத்தில் அந்த ஜெப உதவிக்கு நன்றி சொல்ல நான் விரும்புகிறேன் இது ஒரு இறைவனுடைய பெயரான புதுமை இறக்க இறக்கமிக்க செயல் என்று நான் சொல்ல வேண்டும் எனவே இந்த நேரத்தில் இறைவனுக்கு நான் நன்றி சொல்ல வேண்டாத சமயத்தில் இன்னும் இந்த தொற்று நோயினால் பாதிக்கப்பட்டு துன்பப்படு துன்பப்படுகிறவர்கள் விரைவிலேயே சுதந்திர நாம் ஜெபிப்போம் இந்த தொற்று நோய் விரைவிலேயே அல்லது முடிவுக்கு வர வேண்டும் என்று மனுக்களும் தாக்கப்பட வேண்டும் என்று நாம் ஜெபிப்போம் Dear friends, today's theme is one of the statements of the theme of the Nicene theme. Interestingly, this year for the Novena Masses, we have taken different statements of the theme for our reflection. Today, we reflect on this particular statement, I or we believe in the forgiveness of one baptism or the baptism which gives us the forgiveness. This Nicene 3 statement slightly differed from the statements of the Apostles 3. Nicene 3 we usually recite during the Sunday Masses whereas Apostolic 3, Apostles 3 
we recite in the beginning of the rosary this nicene creed was formulated and promulgated in the year 325 in the first council of nicaea that's why it gets the name nicene creed about baptism we can have several reflections and meditation i like to say a few words about the baptism in the first part of my homily and in the second part a few words about the original sin and how we need to rely upon the holy spirit in order to remain in the grace of god first a few words about baptism today's gospel describes the scene of jesus being baptized now one question may arise if baptism removes the original sin what is the need for jesus to be baptized was jesus also infected by the original sin no jesus undertook the baptism the process the ceremony of baptism to become just like one among us and that shows his humility and the scene of baptism is an opportunity to reveal the mystery of the holy trinity because we hear the voice from heaven that is the voice of god the father then jesus the son and the dove comes in the form of the holy spirit comes in the form of the dove and then it is a opportunity to reveal to the world that jesus is the son of god in the new testament we have several references or explanations about baptism we don't have time to go into all those uh, aspects the first reading today we heard from the letter of romans similarly in other letters of saint paul and even from the letters of saint peter we have several references to baptism the impact of baptism and so on from all these biblical references and teachings the church gives us at least four teachings on four elements of baptism one in baptism we receive the holy spirit two in baptism our original sin is removed three in baptism we are sealed with the permanent mark as a child of god and four we become the members of the holy catholic church about all the other aspects we have occasions to speak about to reflect on for example we take the uh, gifts of the holy spirit and so on today i like to focus on this particular aspect of original sin before we come to that a question might arise child because jesus himself was baptized only at the age of 30 as we know from the gospel but we the catholic church baptizes the children as early as possible as need how many of you remember your baptism day or day of course you don't remember if you are baptized as a child you have to go to the parish records to find out the day of baptism is it not more meaningful to be baptized when the person the child is at least 15 if not 30 years of age but still the church insists upon the child baptism for several reasons first of all we need not follow literally what jesus did jesus as a jew he was baptized at the age of 30 and it was a custom those days for the jewish preachers rabbi rabbi to begin their ministry towards the end of their 20s or at the beginning of 30 so jesus began his ministry with the baptism at the age of 30 and we need not follow in every aspect jesus listen in his culture or the food habits or the lifestyle because we are not jews on the other hand we follow all the teachings of jesus and the person of jesus in as much as it contributes to our faith and moral life so just because jesus happened to be baptized 
when he was 30, it is not right to argue that we also should be baptized when we are when we are 30. Moreover, the parents have the duty to give the best to the child as much as possible. For example, the parents don't wait for the child to grow up and ask, Mommy, give me food, give me good dress. No. The mother, the father, they know what is good for the child. Even without asking of the child, they do their best. Similarly, in the matters of faith also, the parents need to give the best to the child, namely the Christian faith. I believe in this Jesus Christ. I believe in this church and I cherish it. I want to give the same faith to my child. So what is wrong in giving that faith to the child as early as possible? That is why the church insists upon the child baptism. Also the church focuses on the need for the godparents. Because godparents need to be exemplary to the child in the growth and so on. Sometimes the parents may be too, uh, may be too much preoccupied with the worldly and external physical needs of the child and they may forget the spiritual aspects, spiritual dimensions of the child. And that is why the church insists upon the role of, of the godparents. That is why we need to be very careful in choosing the godparents. Godparents should be good, should be good in moral life and should be able to accompany the child in the life of the child. Oftentimes what happens, we wait for the uncle who is in Dubai to come for baptism. Still then we delay the baptism. Because if the uncle comes from Dubai, he may give a gold chain for the child. But that's not the purpose. This uncle comes during the time of baptism, goes back. When he comes afterwards, the child will be receiving the soul communion. When the child, uncle comes next, the child may be getting married, isn't it? So we need to keep a person as a God parent, God father, God mother, the one who is able to accompany the child in the day to day life situation. And that is why the church insists upon the role of God parents. Now coming to the second aspect, the original sin. As I said, the baptism gives us several graces and there are different dimensions to baptism. One particular basic aspect of baptism is the removal of the original sin. Now what is this original sin? We must have some clarity in understanding this original sin. The original sin obviously refers to the sin of the first parents, Adam and Eve. If that was the original sin, what about our sins? Is it a duplicate sin or Xerox copy of the sin? Original sin they committed the fall of the first parents. Today when we speak about the original sin, it refers not to an act of sin, but it refers to the state of sinfulness. Because God created Adam and Eve, human beings, in full grace and full justice with all spiritual elements and good qualities. But unfortunately, because of the first fall, human beings lost that grace and the spiritual effect of God's creation. And we are obviously the descendants of the first parents. So naturally, we also participate in the sin that they have committed. Though we did not commit that particular sin. And when we say that we are affected by the original sin, it should be understood in an analogical sense. Now what is an analogy? We must have studied in our English grammar class. One word may have different meaning in an analogical sense. For example, good pen. We understand what is it what it means for a pen to be good, a good picture, a good dog, a good homily, not this one, in general. Now, in all these things, the word good is common. Good pen, good picture, good homily, but the meaning of this good should be understood in a different way in each context. 
When you say good dog and good pen, we cannot expect the pen also as a tail like the dog. No, it is an analogical sense. Similarly, when we say the original sin, it should be understood in the analogical sense. It, ref it refers to the state of sinfulness, not the act of sin. Because of this fall of the first parents, we have lost the original holiness, grace and justice. However, it's not completely removed from us. The original holiness and grace is only wounded. It is damaged. So it can be rectified. It can be restored back. And precisely that is what done by baptism. Baptism tries to restore the original holiness and the grace which were lost by the first fall of the parents. Now the question comes, if our sins are removed at the baptism, then why do we come into the sin again? Why do we need to go for confession again? Because in baptism our sins are forgiven. Yes, that is the point. Though, in principle, our sin is removed, especially the original sin is removed in baptism, we can be in the state of sin in our day-to-day -day activities of our life. That is why we need to get the help, the guidance, the accompaniment of the Holy Spirit continuously, constantly in our life. Otherwise, we cannot face the challenges that come from the state of sin. There seems to be natural inclination in us to be selfish, to commit sin, to tell lies, to speak doing harmony, or even tendency to give a long harmony like this. So, there can be even inclinations and tendencies in our lives, and we need to rely upon the Holy Spirit. You know, once in a hospital, a small children about 10 years old, the sisters kept a nice grand lunch for them because of celebration. And they kept apples, eggs, and then some other fruits, and then rice and so on. At the beginning of their table, they left one bowl. Take only one, God is watching. Take only one, God is watching. So all the children were taking one egg, one apple and going on. One child took two eggs. One egg and when she came to the apple spray, she took two apples. Then her friend from behind told her, hey, take only one apple, God is watching. Then the other girl said, God is watching only the egg spray, not the apple spray. Let me take two. So there seems to be a natural tendency to go in a shortcut way or to violate the rules, or to go against the expectation of the church or God and so on. In another occasion, in a house, in a family, a small girl of eight years old, she came out of the kitchen and the mother asked her, did we eat sugar in the kitchen? Because the mother found some sugar on the lid. And the child immediately said, no, I did not take sugar. The mother said, don't tell lies. I see some sugar particles on it. Did you eat or not? Ah, yes, a little bit. Then the child might. Don't eat sugar, you will be back for you. The next day, when the child came out of the kitchen, she made sure to wipe out all the sugar particles and came out. And the mother again found her. You had sugar, no? Then she said, no, see, no sugar out of my lip. The mother said, don't tell lies. I see the small little stool which was away, now it is under this cupboard where you put that stool to reach out to the sugar thing. Did we take sugar or not? Then the child realized she forgot to keep the stool back. Then she said, don't take sugar, this is the last one. The third time, the mother uh, understood. But the child made sure to keep the stool back and wipe the uh, mouth, the lips and came out. The mother found that he ate sugar, no? Then she said, what every day you are saying, you are saying sugar, sugar. See the stool is in the same place and see there is no sugar on my lips and all. The mother said, don't tell lies. The sugar thing which I kept like this, now it is turned. Did you eat sugar or not? Ah, little bit. 
So next time the child kept the sugar in exactly the same position, kept the spoon stool back and wiped nicely and came out and the mother again found out. Meat sugar, what sugar? See, the tin is the same position, stool is there, no sugar on my mouth. And the child was wondering, how this mother is able to find out the bag of sugar? Then the child realized, even my father cannot escape from my mother, how can I escape from her? And the mother said, the tin, the lid of the tin is very loose. I kept it very tight, it's very loose now. I found it. Because of the fear, the child kept it loose and didn't go stop it in here. My dear friends, the point is, who taught the child to tell lies every time? It appears as if it comes so spontaneously to tell lies. At the same time, only does the child tell lies to please the mother. So the child is caught in the struggle of pleasing the mother and listening to or acquiring some sweetness, the joy of sweetness of little sugar. Though the child knows if I eat sugar, that is hurting my mother and my mother is so loving, but still the child is not able to overcome the temptation of the sweetness of the sugar. This artist, the struggle, St. Paul refers to in the Romans 7.15, we find St. Paul says, I want to do something good, but I am not able to do that. I don't want to do certain bad things, but I find myself end up doing the same bad thing, the very thing which I don't want to do. Exactly, that's a spiritual stuff. Besides me, that refers to the state of sin in which we find ourselves. The tendency to be sinful, the tendency to be selfish, and we need to constantly depend on the graces, the gifts of the Holy Spirit in order to face these challenges. Now the child has the problem of eating sugar, but as we grow in our lives, there are different challenges. Maybe when we grow out, the sugar may not be a problem, because the doctor tells don't eat sugar, and we also don't want sugar. But there are other aspects in life which keep us, or land us, in the spiritual circle. And as St. Paul says, we also often end up doing what we don't want to do and we are not able to do what we want to do. Precisely, to face this spiritual struggle, we need to have the gifts of the Holy Spirit and that Holy Spirit is given to us in abundance in the time of baptism. A few words in Tamil, Anbandale, in the Thirumulundu, Namaku Kodaku Kodia, Tui Avi Anavari Tunai, Thodanda Nam Vardil Kavindu. Yenane, in the Thirumulundu, Namai Jenma Pavatil in the Kalavin Adam, and the Pavam Sayu Kodia, and the Arvam Aladur Tundadan, Namile Podum, Yirindu Mundi Rikarade. Yenane, and the Pava Nilay Rindu, Pava Tundadan Rindu, Nam Viliva Vendanga. And the power tuned the Nilin and Vedivandi, Yerevan Kuhan the Walki, Walla Vedimanda, Tuya Yana Vin Tunay, Gobal Nalu, Namuni Walki, Teda Vindu, in the Adi Petro, Sayida and the Pavum, Jenma Pavum in Ramsalundo, Adi Namuni Walki, Yendavadamana Pavan, Sayari in Puriki Vilay, Maratha, Pavan Sayari in Puriki Vilay, Pavan Nilay in Puriki Vilay. And the Nilay in the Namuni Vedimanda, Tuya Yana Vintuna, Namaku Nichi Maka, Sidapati. 